President Donald Trump admitted Monday that there's something to climate change no question but says he remains unconvinced that global warming is man-made. At a hurricane briefing in Georgia, the president said that only he knows of only one storm in the past 50 years that was worse than Hurricane Michael and the last one before that was in the 1890s. So who knows, he told a journalist asking if he'd changed his mind about global warming in light of the weather. Trump acknowledged in a 60 Minutes interview that aired on Sunday evening that he believes something's happening with the climate and he no longer believes that global warming is a hoax. But he said he believes it'll change back again and that he doesn't want to be put at a disadvantage economically by pouring trillions into prevention strategies. Following up on the answer in Georgia as he toured Hurricane Michael's destruction, Trump again said there's something there, but he still doesn't know if warming is caused by humans. I have a home in Palm Beach, Florida and frankly for years, we had none in them, the last couple of years we had more. Hopefully we'll go back to many years of having none, he said. We've been hit by the weather, there is no doubt about it, there is something there, man-made or not. President Trump was on his second storm tour of that hurricane season with First Lady Melania Trump on Monday, landing in Air Force One near Macon, Georgia, late in the afternoon, after spending much of the day in western Florida. They received a briefing on the storm in Warner Robins alongside Georgia's governor before traveling to a local farm to see Hurricane Michael's effect on cotton and pecan production. The couple spent several hours viewing damage caused by Hurricane Michael in the Florida panhandle by helicopter and on foot. They also volunteered at a FEMA distribution center. Somebody said it was like a very wide, extremely wide tornado, the president said of the disaster areas he saw after arriving at the Lynn Haven distribution center. This was beyond any winds they've seen for, I guess, 50 years. Nobody has seen anything like it. Trump said he was shocked, having seen extensive water damage on previous trips, that these massive trees are just ripped out of the earth by the Category 4 storm that was accompanied by violent winds and powerful tides. Nobody has seen anything like this, he told journalists of the storm that took at least 18 lives. This is really incredible. The president and first lady were at the aid center to distribute bottles of water, but scores of supporters lined up for selfies with the first couple. We voted for you and we're going to vote in the midterms, one woman told them. Another gentleman informed the president, we knew we could trust you to get this done. The couple's first stop on their day-long tour was the Florida Panhandle. The president said upon arrival that the damage was expansive in some areas, but the state's governor, Republican Rick Scott, is doing an incredible job and first responders have been amazing at preventing additional lives lost. Many of these people have no they have no homes, he commented. Some of them have no trace of a home. You wouldn't even know it. It just got blown right off the footing. Dot the president took off in Marine One to see the damage for himself, covering ground over Panama City and Mexico Beach, Florida, where the coastline was damaged the most. His helicopter touched down at the Northwest Florida Beaches International Airport in Panama City, where he was transported to Lynn Haven to take a foot tour by motorcade. He said that after his aerial tour, that it was hard to believe how much of the coast the storm tore up. I've seen pictures. But it's hard to believe, he observed. When you're above it, in a plane, and to see the total devastation, to see no houses left. Not even the pads are left. It's incredible. Dot the president indicated that the tour had made an impact. To see this, personally, it's very tough. Very, very tough. Total devastation, he said. The first lady and the president left the White House on Monday morning as a light drizzle came down on Washington. They were whisked away to Joint Base Andrews in Marine One. From there, they flew on Air Force One to Egan Air Force Base in western Florida and on to Panama City by helicopter. Trump's agenda was mostly unknown on Monday morning, save for his announced plans to visit Georgia after he was through in Florida. We'll be leaving for Florida and Georgia with the first lady to tour that hurricane damage and visit with FEMA, first responders and law enforcement. Maximum effort is taking place, everyone is working very hard. Worst hit in 50 years, he tweeted before leaving the White House residence. Trump said en route that he was also thinking about our great Alabama farmers and our many friends in North and South Carolina today. We are with you, in Georgia, he said that he'd spoken to Alabama's governor, Republican Kay Ivey, on the phone. She's in there fighting, he said. We have terrific people running these states.
Trump told reporters that the governors know that I'm there for them in affected states, which includes North and South Carolina. The deficit's always a problem for me, he said of federal costs, but we take care of our people most importantly. At the stop the president faced questions about his position on climate change, which he called a hoax created by the Chinese prior to his election. I want crystal clean water. I want the cleanest air on the planet, he argued. I am truly an environmentalist, but that doesn't mean that we have to put every one one of our businesses out of business. In a pun, that was unintended as such Trump said our nation's the hottest on the on the planet. He quickly corrected himself and explained that he meant economically as he responded to a question about his decision to pull out of the Paris climate change agreement. The president took a solo trip to the Carolinas this hurricane season already to pass out hot meals and tour storm-torn neighborhoods. Walking through one badly damaged neighborhood he remarked that the homeowner was lucky, at least, to have inherited a yacht that washed into his yard. A storm trip last year saw him throwing out rolls of paper towels. Melania Trump did not accompany him to North and South Carolina, with her office citing scheduling conflicts. She was all smiles as she left the White House with him on Monday, however, in combat boots and black jacket she traded in for a white three-quarter length sleeve top on the way to her destination. The first couple held hands and posed for the cameras as a beaming Melania, who dismissed her husband's alleged cheating in tell-all interview on Friday, listened to him compliment her to the press. Melania, who drew scrutiny last year for wearing designer high heels on her way to disaster zones, took a different approach on Monday morning, picking out a pair of sturdy black combat boots instead. She paired them with gray skinny jeans, a black top, and a matching jacket. At the White House, she wore her hair in a stylish, wavy blowout. She tucked her, her hair into a pony while and put on a white USA ball cap later that matched the ones her husband wears when he golfs on the weekend. He held a red one emblazoned with the number 45, a symbol of his presidency, as he left the White House. The First Lady, who recently returned from her first solo international visit as First Lady after touring Ghana, Malawi, Kenya, and Egypt, held hands with her husband as they departed the White House in the rain. While in Africa, Melania said during an interview that she loves her husband and has much more important things to think about than allegations he cheated on her with a porn star, a Playboy playmate or anyone else. The first lady, who was interviewed by ABC two weeks ago, said people are just spreading rumors about her marriage. She insisted allegations of her husband's infidelities with porn star Stormy Daniels and ex-Playboy playmate Karen McDougal are not any of her concern. In the interview, Melania also explained why she wore a jacket that said I really don't care, do you, on a trip to visit migrant children who had been separated from their parents. The first lady claimed it was a message to people and the left-wing media who are criticizing me, echoing her husband's take on it, even though her spokeswoman Stephanie Grisham had said at the time, it's a jacket. There was no hidden message. Melania's outfits have become the story at several official outings. In August 2017, she was seen heading out to visit Texas after the passage of Hurricane Harvey, wearing black slacks, a bomber jacket, and stiletto heels, which were promptly mocked and blasted as tone deaf. She switched then to tennis shoes for the tour and wore black combat boots to Florida and Georgia on Monday to review damage from the October. 10 storm with with 155 miles per hour winds that was one of the most powerful storms to make landfall in the continental United States since weather records have been kept. At least 18 people in four states have died in or because of the storm and dozens remained missing as panhandle officials continue their search and recovery efforts.